Hello, I'm George Teasdale with Engineered Air Balance. Today we're going to be discussing the procedures required for performing a pitot tube traverse in a flat oval duct. Okay, so let's discuss the pitot tube. Here at the tip we have what's measuring the total pressure and this this is the end that gets placed directly in the airstream and the pitot tube uh, is con constructed with a tube inside of a tube such that the radial holes on, on the outer tube here are going to measure the static pressure. And so the total pressure, as we mentioned a second ago, runs through the inner tube uh, along this, along the pitot tube, and then the radial holes measure the static pressure again on the outside of the inner tube. Okay, so this end of the pitot tube, we again have our cutaway where the uh, inner tube here is the total pressure tube and it is connected to this, this port here at the end and at this port this is uh, typically connected to the high side of the manometer. This radial uh, outer tube cutaway, um, again the outer tube, it, it runs to, to this port and this is typically connected to the low side of the manometer. Shown here are the different instruments that we're going to need to perform a pitot tube traverse. Featured here are multiple manometers from different manufacturers. We're also going to need pitot tube, a tape measure which will aid in measuring uh, the grid locations for the pitot tube and of course the ductwork itself. Okay, let's talk about velocity profiles in ductwork. Rarely is a velocity profile uniform in the ductwork. Typically, as the airflow flows through the ductwork, it is higher velocity in the center and lower velocity at the edges due to friction. There's quite a few things that can change the characteristics of the velocity profile. Uh, this typically includes duct transitions, elbows, and proximity to fan inlets and discharge effects. So there's several important rules when picking a location for conducting a traverse. First of all, in order to maintain a location that's going to contain the best chances for uniform flow, a traverse plane should be located as far away from an upstream disturbance as possible, and ideally at least one diameter downstream from, an up, from a disturbance. A traverse plane is also suitable for flow measurements if the average velocity is greater than 1,000 feet a minute and no velocity pressure is negative or zero. Take traverse measurements at actual conditions in actual cubic feet per minute. If the traverse location occurs at a location that is not standard air conditions, a velocity correction may be required. When picking a location for traverses, ensure that the duct size does not change in that traversed section. Face the pitot tube into the airstream and parallel to the ductwork at each measurement point and measure the velocity pressure. Convert velocity pressure to feet per minute velocity before averaging if the traverse is taken at other than standard conditions. Based on recent ASHRAE research and our experiences, we recommend log WHF or also known as log T for rectangular ducts and square ducts and the log linear method for round ducts. For our next real world example, we will be demonstrating how to mark the pitot tube for a 24 inch wide by 12 inch tall flat oval duct. To do this, we're going to be first marking our pitot tube for the rectangular section of the flat oval duct. We will be referencing the log Chebyshev method. Shown here is the log Chebyshev chart, and we utilize this chart to determine the number of traverse locations by first measuring the sides of the ductwork and comparing that with the number of required points and lines as well as the factors on the chart. For example, the first point to mark for a 12 inch rectangular duct, we would look at the top line which indicates a minimum of three points with factors of 0 .064, 0 .50, and 0.936. Each of these factors must be multiplied by the side of the ductwork measurement to determine the proper location to mark or drill for the traverse. Today for this real world example, we have chosen to perform a five point traverse instead of a three point. It is a technician's discretion to increase the number of points for the traverse if they see that it may be required. The first point to mark for a 12 inch duct is 0.074, again times 12 inches, 
results in 7 eighths on the pitot tube. Next, the factor is a 0.288, which results in 3 and 1 half on the pitot tube. The third factor is 0 0.50 multiplied by 12 inches, gives us 6 inches on the pitot tube. The fourth factor, 0.712, again multiplied by 12 inches, gives us 8.5 on the pitot tube. And finally, the last factor is a 0.926. Again, multiplied by 12 inches, results in 11 and 1 8 on the pitot tube. Next, we will be performing the log linear portion of the flat oval traverse. This is a 24 inch wide by 12 inch tall flat oval duct, and we will be performing the log linear traverse from one side of the duct. We will need to make our markings for the circular portion of the duct on the first half of the pitot tube, and then account for the 12 inches of rectangular ductwork, and then finish up with the last circular log linear measurements. In order to mark our pitot tube for this traverse, we will be using the log linear chart and method, which indicates 10 factors to multiply by the diameter of the ductwork. The first factor for the log linear method for the 12 inch circular portion is 0.019 which results in one quarter inch on our pitot tube. The second factor, 0 0.077, results in seven eighths on our pitot tube. The third factor, 0 0.153, results in one and seven eighths on our pitot tube. The fourth factor, 0 0.217, results in two and five eighths on the pitot tube. The fifth factor, 0 0.361, results in 4 and 3 eighths on the pitot tube. Again, for this next five measurements, we will ensure that we account for the 12 inch section of rectangular duct. So the factor is 0.639, times 12 plus the 12 inches. This results in 19 and 5 eighths. Next, the factor is 0.783, taken into account the 12 inches, results in 21 and 3 eighths. The next factor, 0.847 times 12 plus the additional 12 is 22 and 1 8. The ninth factor, 0.923 times 12 plus 12 is 23 and 1 8. And the final factor, 0.981 times 12 plus 12 is 23 and 3 quarters. At this point in time, the flat oval ductwork log linear section is marked. Okay, now we are going to connect our manometer to our pitot tube. Again, the manometer uh, is utilized here to accept the pressure from the, the, the total pressure port of the pitot tube and the static pressure port of the pitot tube. So let's go ahead and hook that up. We take our hose and ensure that we are nice and snug on our port here, and this is our this becomes now our total pressure tube, and we'll ensure that it is hooked up to the positive side of our manometer. Next, we'll take this hose and connect it to our static pressure port of our pitot tube, and ensure that it goes onto the low port of the manometer. And I want to stress here that the manometer is essentially taking a differential pressure between the total and the static. The velocity pressure is the result of that differential pressure, and the velocity pressure is the total pressure minus the static pressure. Here we can visually demonstrate the location of the pitot tube inside of a duct when performing a pitot tube traverse. We can visually see that the pitot tube must be oriented into the airstream. It must be 
perpendicular to the airstream in a cross-sectional plane. We do not want to see the pitot tube at an incorrect angle since that will produce erroneous readings and provide unacceptable data. So at this point in time, we will take the pitot tube and we'll begin traversing the rectangular portion of the flat oval duct. It's also important that the pitot tube be gridded off and measurements taken in a consistent manner. For the purposes of this demonstration, we will proceed with a top-down, left-to-right grid pattern, which is recommended for consistency to produce repeat results. Point number one, point number two, point number three, point number four, and point number five. And for the sake of speed, we're going to go through the next holes a little bit more quickly. And of course, we want to make sure that we perform a static pressure measurement. To do this, Again, we will remove the, the hose that is connected to the total pressure port of the pitot tube so that the only hose remaining on the pitot tube is on the static pressure port. We will then record this value for the traverse. The next step after we finish the pitot tube traverse of the rectangular section of the flat oval duct it's the next transition down here into the circular section and utilize the log linear method to traverse the circular section. So we'll go ahead and begin and we'll utilize the points that we've marked on our pitot tube, making sure that we stay perpendicular in the cross plane to the airflow and that our pitot tube is facing into the airflow stream. And we begin by taking our measurements at each point that we've marked on our pitot tube. Point number one, point number two, point number three, point number four, point number five, and then again, just to reiterate, we have accommodated for the rectangular section of ductwork in our markings of the pitot tube. So you'll notice there is a, a large empty space here that has no markings on the pitot tube that we will then push through and the next set of markings then begins at the start of the other half of the circle. So this becomes point number six, point number seven, point number eight, point number nine, and point number 10. Okay, now that we have finished our pitot tube traverse, we need to ensure that every single velocity pressure is then converted into a velocity. That calculation is the square root of that velocity pressure times 4,005. This velocity then is calculated for each individual velocity point that was measured in the duct. Once we have that entire grid and we've made those conversions, we take the average of those readings and for this particular traverse, the average velocity was 1,090 feet per minute. To calculate the, the airflow in CFM, we now have to multiply our average velocity times our area. And because it's a flat oval ductwork, we are going to take the area of the rectangular section and add it to the area of the circular section. So we have a 12 by 12 rectangular section, 1.0 square feet, plus the 0.79 which is the area of the circular section, and we get a total area for the flat oval duct of 1.79. So to calculate our airflow in CFM, we will take our average velocity of 1090 times our area of 1.79 square feet, and it results in 1,950 CFM. Thank you for joining us at the Engineer Air Balance Training Facility, and thank you for watching this video on demonstrating the procedures for pitot tube traverse. If you've liked this video, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like more information on our training facility or training materials, please contact 
training at eabcoinc.com.